Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up and congratulations to Willow who's won the uh, Charles Dowding signed calendar that I bought by mistake. Um, I bought too many of them and put it up for a for a, a freebie giveaway and Willow won. So I'll be getting that off to you this week Willow and thanks for your email with your address. I did get that so we'll get that sorted out for you this week. Plenty of time for before next year but I know you're keen to look at it as you would be. I'll get it off to you this week. Anyway, we're going to have a quick look around and an update on a couple of things and uh, yeah, let's just crack on with it. <laughs> so seedlings are sown a couple of weeks ago are um, really motoring on. I mean, that over there is a bunch of radish, two different types. There's a German beer pickle radish, as I call them, just a long red one. And they tend to eat them with their beer in Germany. Um, and then a normal French breakfast on the end. There's some chard in the middle, which I've already hooped some out and potted them on. And some turnip down here. They all need thinning out, so that's a job for this week. And over here, we've got the, uh, the broccoli rab, and in front of it, there's some spring cabbage coming up here. So these need sorting out as well. But first, we're gonna have a look at this rab. Right, so this is uh, broccoli rab and you normally see it touted as a 60 day crop which you know in, in all fairness it is but this was one that was new to me i saw it and it's broccoletto quarantino riccia and it purports to be a 45 day crop now we're at 51 days now and you can see we've got stuff that we can harvest um at 45 days there was two stems i think these two taller ones here they're all still perfectly edible and all all i'm going to do is just cut them down like so and these will just get lightly steamed we're having a I think we're having a roast chicken today so this will go lovely with that I mean you're just basically scaring it with a bit of heat to be honest you're not uh, it's not a great culinary adventure to cook them just a bit of steaming or just scare them in a pan and that will add a nice bit of interest to the meal. Now I think these are fairly bitter. They're not outrageously bitter like some of the Asian mustards, but there is a bitter taste to them. So I think that this suits going with a fattier meat, like a, a pork chop or a pork belly or a breast of lamb, something along those lines. Uh, but that'll go lovely with the, with the chicken today and roast potatoes. So we'll have that and that's a, that's a nice portion for two. There'll be other veg on the plate as well. I'm going to eat the lot, flowers, everything, leaves, stem, the whole kit and caboodle. So that's lovely. Yeah, very pleased with that. I say 51 days, not quite the 45 as purported, but there were stems there that we could pick and eat at 45. So in that respect, it was uh, quite correct. But as you can see, 51 days. I mean, there's a few more there I can pick. I might have that one in a minute. Yeah, there's, there's a few more there, but I'll let them grow on, I think, and uh, we'll get another harvest off them uh, later on in the year. So there we go, broccoli rob, broccoletto quarantino riccia. I'll put the name in the description if you want to have a look for it and let you know where you can get hold of the seed, because I still think it's worth buying the seed now and growing it um, through the autumn, especially if you've got a tunnel. So I'm going to plant some more in the tunnel, one of the tunnels anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, nice little harvest. <laughs> so that piece on broccoli rob, I filmed yesterday and then had to whiz home quickly. And uh, couldn't really add anything more to that video yesterday. So there you go, I'm showing it today. Well, what I'm doing now is just, you can hear now, it's, uh, it's raining outside can't really get on the ground out there which I want to but I'll come in here and do some planting instead and what I've been putting in and I'll show you in a wider shot at the end of this I've put some pak choy in I've put some green stem and some red stem you can maybe maybe see the red stem just here put a little patches of both of those in and now I'm putting some tat soy in and these really will probably all be gone by Christmas, I would think. It doesn't last as very long. 
and I will harvest it when it's young and some of these are almost ready for harvest now but it's just to have something have something fresh on the plate and you just scare these with heat you know you don't need to overcook them so they're great for stir fries or just a, as a green on your plate really and th at this time of the year that's what you really need is those things that are really good for you greens are and this is why I plant lots and lots of them we'll go through them like a house on fire and I've got lots more greens I've got chard and lettuce and, and stuff up there on a the hanging shelf and I'll just keep the plants coming whenever there's a space and I've got the time and the inclination I'll plant them so a wet day like today is a perfect day for coming inside and getting some planting done very easy to grow this I haven't I'm not putting any uh, fertilizer in the ground has had plenty of fertilizer this year in for previous crops so I'm not bothered with these and these will grow fairly quickly and I'm using these uh, container-wise trays here. God, I love these things, they're brilliant. Just shove your finger underneath, out pops the plants. And if you want to do speed planting, like I always seem to do, then it's perfect for me. Good and strong, just pick the whole tray up. I mean, look at the roots underneath there. <laughs> they're brilliant. So they make good plants as well. And you can use them again and again. So this is what I've planted this morning. There's a load of green pak choy up there, then a load of red. And we'll, we'll be eating that a bit of each at the same time. And then we come down here to the tatsoi. And well, I should imagine we'll get down here fairly rapidly in eating this. So this is quite close together because it'd be harvested fairly young. And then as we get along here, I space them a bit more because they'll grow to bigger plants. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll see how piggish we get with them. Well, there we go, that's what I've just done now. Now I need to find something to fill this little bed. Now, I just want to take a minute to give a nice little message out. Um, the other night I had a, an email from a family who told me that they all watch this channel, which, you know, is fantastic and I'm very appreciative of that. But that the other night, their five-year-old daughter was tucked up in bed and was watching Green Side Up, which to me is fantastic because kids are the future of gardening. And the more connection that kids have with growing their own food, the better. But unfortunately, this little girl is poorly and in bed. So this is for you. Get well soon, little one. So I've got a few lettuce planted in here and it's a mix of uh, winter density, four seasons and Rouge de Eva. And I've got a few spring onions in over here. Don't expect anything from the spring onions until, well, spring. <laughs> but that variety is Ishikura. And of course, got all the tatsoi around there. And then the two different colours of pak choy. So a productive morning, really. So to follow on with all this veg, see it grow, see it being harvested, taken home. And see what else I plant through this winter. Just hit the big, big red subscribe button down there. And if you hit the bell as well and select all, every time I post a new video, you will get an email to let you know that he's posted a new video. Um, again, hope the little little one gets better soon. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care now. Ta-ra. <laughs>